South Korea is in mourning. In fact, every K-pop fan is in mourning. On Thursday, Korean singer Moon Bin was found dead in his apartment. Cause of death? Unknown for now. But the police say it was most likely suicide. Moon Bin was part of a K-pop band called Astro. He was just 25 years old. His death has left South Korea shocked. Fans have set up memorials for him across the world, in Manila, in Seoul, in Santiago, Chile. There is a genuine sense of loss and grief. They cannot believe a successful, famous and thriving pop star would take his life. First, listen into the fans. We are still in the process of trying to accept that Moonbin is gone. So I have been crying all night and all morning. I want to say it is okay to have a break if things get too difficult. Because fans will always be waiting and understanding. Nothing we can do to bring him back. But lessons must be learnt. Because this isn't the first high-profile suicide in the K-pop industry. One was reported earlier this month. Korean actress Jung Che Yul was found dead in her home. She was 26 years old. Last year, another actress, Yu Ju Yoon, was found dead in her home. She was 27 years old. In 2019, K-pop singer Suli took her life after struggling with bullying. She was 26. A month later, her friend and fellow pop star Gu Hara was found dead. What's common about these people? A, they're all very young. 25 and 26 is still early times in your life and career. And B, they're all K-pop stars. So clearly there's something wrong in the industry, something that's pushing young people to suicide. The question is what? In one word, it's pressure. What we see is the glamorous side of K-pop. The glitzy concerts, the devoted fans, the private jets. What we don't see is the story behind it. The struggles required to reach the top. Let me tell you how it works. South Korea's K-pop industry is like an assembly chain. Only the best products make it out. It starts off with auditions. Thousands of children attend these events with their parents. And their chances are dismal. Reports say 700 to 1. Meaning if 700 children turn up, one gets selected. 699 children are rejected. But honestly, they're the lucky ones. Because the selected kids are put into a rigorous training. Their day starts at 4 a.m. and ends by midnight. Remember, these are young kids, some of them as young as 8, 9 and 10. They're trained in vocals, dance and Korean. The diet is bad because it's about looks and not nutrition. And the training is hard because it's about money and not having fun. After all this, a K-pop star is born, usually in their teenage years. They tour the world, they sing in front of massive crowds, they also get praise from the Korean government. But as they grow older, things change. By 25 or 26, the pressure is building on you. You have to reinvent your style or create a different type of music. If not, the assembly chain behind you is ready to push out new stars. Some singers survive this relentless pressure, others simply cannot. That's the dark side of K-pop, the side the Korean government does not talk about. The question is, what is the solution? For starters, cultural changes. Many South Koreans do not talk about mental health. They think it's taboo. This mindset reflects in South Korea's overall suicide numbers. It's the highest among developed nations. In 2021, around 13,000 people died by suicide in South Korea. The rate is 26 deaths per 100,000 people. Here in India, it's around 12. If you can't talk about mental health, you can't stop these deaths. And the Korean government must take the first step. They have no problems flaunting K-pop to the world, no problems cashing in on their fame or sending them to the United Nations. But when it comes to their mental health, there is silence. This is the hard reality of South Korea's soft power.